We're gonna try to mess with this transmission some. If you watch the other video, then you already know that it doesn't work. And I told you I would tell you in this video kind of why. Look at that big rust hole. Um, so before I ever even started to try to start this uh, um, car and put it in gear and all that, I pulled the dipstick to try to drain any fluid in it. Well, it didn't have any fluid in it, and I raised the back and all that stuff. So, whatever. Didn't think much of it. Well, I went and bought $65 worth of transmission fluid, put it in there. Car would never move. I put it on jack stands. It would sort of move in gear, but not really. Um, messed with it, messed with it, and then it kind of sort of moved, but then quit, and... I finally drained the fluid again and it's just strawberry so it doesn't surprise me at all that this transmission was it had a bunch of water in it I'm guessing the water is in the torque converter or something I don't know but uh, water somewhere in the transmission it's got a brand new aluminum radiator I already kind of checked that out to make sure and uh, that's not leaking any kind of fluids into this so we're going to pull this and drain the nasty stuff out and work on pulling this pan down and other stuff. I'm only doing this because, imagine this, I can't even find a transmission, so the chances of me rebuilding this one aren't probably very good, but we'll take it apart and see, and then obviously once you get a bunch of water and stuff in your transmission it pretty much ruins them anyway so even if I could figure oh this valve stuck or something more than likely it won't work and I don't know if I want to go spend 60 more bucks on transmission fluid but uh, I'll get that broke loose and we'll get her draining I'm trying really hard not to make a big giant mess in my floor I actually spent quite a bit of time scrubbing, mopping, and degreasing the floor well, when I had this pushed outside the last few days. So I wonder if water's just going to come out of here now. Just strawberry fluid. That looks really yummy, don't it? But, like I said, we just got to see what we can do with this transmission. Obviously, probably nothing, but you never know. I mean, I'd be happy if it just would move itself around. Um, lastly, uh, I have a friend who thinks he has an M12 or something, but that's pretty doubtful too, so... And of course, this won't surprise any of you that watch my videos, but um, I don't know anything about these Borg Warner transmissions. Oh, what does that actually say right there? It's actually got writing on it. One or more. Oh, probably patents or something. But um, anyways. Um, so I'm just going by what a few people told me to look for inside the transmission so we'll pull this pan and have an eyeball maybe it's just got a plug filter maybe maybe you know we'll flush it out really good but this is all just big maybes but that's something to do so I'll bring you back when I get the pan off all right in the manual that I made up for this transmission because that's the only manual I know is what I know just take all your bolts out and maybe leave, I don't know, these four, you know, pretty loose. And that way all this extra strawberry milkshake can drip out on that side. It'll kind of go at an angle. I'm just using my basic knowledge of what I kind of sort of know. Pan it on there. Better make sure I got all these bolts out. Mm -hmm. Well, I 
guess I gotta look around here. Oh, no, I missed the bolt. Look at me go. Ugh. We don't want that. We don't want that mess. Let's see if I can get my impact here to reset. Strawberry on my impact. Brutal. Let's see what we can see in there. Yep, just as I thought. A transmission. Yeah, that looks real good. But boy, look at that nice, beautiful AMC tool oil pan. It's got that going for it. Well, this is drain, and I suppose I can tell you, as I think I already have said, I redid all the brakes. I actually took the wheel cylinders apart. They weren't really bad and honed them. And I actually had a set of inch and three quarter cups laying around. Redid those. Redid the rears. It's actually got e-brakes. And that's a piece of tailpipe, I guess. Now, underneath of this car is just really muddy. It's all mud. It's not paint, it's not concrete. I mean, even on the drive shaft. It's like they drove this through a mud hole before they crashed it. A good old 68 javelin gas tank. It's hooked up to all this crap, my junkyard. Get this to focus. My junkyard javelin exhaust pipes. That's right, I just made this out of what I had laying around the shop. And a massive rust hole. Ooh. That's pretty crunchy. Hmm. I would actually say this is the rustiest AMC I've dealt with. I don't really have a lot of rust in Montana, but this car also has Washington plates or had Washington plates on it. Driver's floorboard looks pretty good. You know, I'm wondering, because the carpet's really bad on this side, I'm wondering if they put a battery in there or something. Or something corrosive, because it's kind of weird. Carpet's even really weird looking in there. Alright, well anyways, enough talking about all the problems with this car. Because this is the biggest problem with the car right now. Um, I'm going to get the rest of these bolts out and drop this pan down and we'll take a look. Well, if that doesn't spell nasty, then I don't know what does. I don't know. I don't know if that's like clutch material or just sludge. Yeah, that looks like something straight out of a horror movie. Ugh. All right, let's see here. Uh huh. Yep. yep, there's a servo right there, yep, and uh, oh look at that, there's an o-ring hanging out of it, I don't know what that servo does, but it ain't doing nothing, uh-huh, yep, right there, I see that one, I guess that's, I, that's the air intake right there. Uh, this little spaghetti thing here is a hairpin, probably the wife dropped in the dipstick. And, yep. Okay, well, we certainly found a problem right off the bat. I don't know if this is good or bad. Um, well, this is bad. I'm pretty sure that's actually broke. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that whole thing is. That whole thing is separated. Well, there's the problem. I found it. I found it without having to even do a whole lot of anything. I'm about to look up and see what that silly thing is and see why it's broken half and 
all that fun stuff, but I'm, I'm probably pretty sure this transmission is just junk no matter what I do. Short-lived video probably, but um, let me figure out what that is and I don't know, maybe for kicks and giggles we'll pull that filter off and look inside of there. Alright everybody, well it's the next day. I was able to wiggle the broken parts out of the transmission and did some research, upset some people on the AMC group page. It's nothing new. <coughs> but um, before I even asked them what it was on the group page, I could kind of figure out pretty quickly what it was or what it does. It uh, locks one of the bands on the transmission. I don't know if it's the forward band or not. <clears throat> I really don't know that this is going to help this car move or do anything. But, um, you know, we're going to try. I spent some time last night after messing with it and getting it out, deciding what I was going to do. Because um, I don't even know what band this runs. So, this, you know, the transmission's probably toast, but. I was going to try to weld this. I do have a setup where I can weld aluminum and all that good stuff, but this is cast. I have welded a little bit of cast before, but it's really tough to do. I'm guessing it's a lot like welding cast iron. I've never welded but before, but I did break my cast aluminum oil pan once on my LS, and the only way I was able to do it, and it took a few tries, was to take the whole oil pan, go turn the oven on to 400 degrees or as high as I could get the oven, set that oil pan in the oven and let it cook for about <clears throat> an hour or so. Quickly grabbed it out, brought it to the shop, set the torch on it, heated it up to six, 700 degrees, whatever it is, and then used my abrasion aluminum rod and welded it that way. Quickly took it, went and put it back in the oven, and then turned the oven off, but let it slowly cool for 24 hours, and that's how that one was able to actually weld and hold. First time I tried it, it didn't do anything. It sort of adhered to it, but it leaked everywhere, so I'm assuming that's what I'd have to do with this, and Chelsea already told me no. I'll be putting car parts in her oven here, so got the no from her but I came up with the next best thing you might have seen these little holes and little threaded holes in it and stuff but um, let me kind of get this reassembled um, well before I do that the biggest concern we got is two biggest concerns we have is well this is broke right where that tube feeds the pressure so I'm going to have to glue or JB weld that. And then the second problem is I looked all up inside this transmission. There's a chunk missing out of this and I can't find it. It's not in the pan. It's not up in the valve body. I don't know where it's at. So I don't know. Maybe it broke a long time ago. And... They dug it out and said, well, it'll work a while, and it finally broke in half. I have no idea. I have no idea how this thing actually broke like this. So, And then I went and got the cheapest, and I do mean the cheapest, transmission fluid I could find from Walmart. And I guess if I can get this all put back together, maybe we'll try it again real quick. So let me get it bolted up and show you what I came up with. All right, so there it is, all Frankenstein stitched back together. As far as I know, it'll fit up inside the transmission, or I could have just done all this for no reason at all. So my theory around getting around that broken tube hole there is I put a bunch of right stuff on it and squish it around. and I don't know, right stuff seems to be pretty good about everything. Um, and like I said, this is just to try it and see if it'll work. I mean, I don't expect this to last or fix it 
very long at all because um, if it'll fix, if it'll actually work and go into gear and stuff, then I might spend the time in actually getting one of these. But still, the same problem with it is, is I don't know how long it had water in it. I don't know where the water was. It looks to be just straight water, like rainwater. I don't think it was antifreeze. But I don't know. It's probably compromised all the clutch disc anyways. But we'll find out. I mean, it's not like I have one of these laying around or anybody I know has one of these laying around. So what's the worst going to happen? This is going to break and ruin the transmission more. So got that guy put in there. The o-ring was hanging out of it, but didn't tear it or anything, so should be fine. And everything's been loctited in, so the little screws can't come out, and they've been drilled and tapped and everything. Like I said, that big chunk is just missing. I don't know where it's at, and I can't find it anywhere. I even took my little bore scope camera thing and went up over the valve body. Thought maybe it got flung up there, but it's definitely not up there. So, um, anyways, I'm going to let this dry up a little bit. I got to clean out that nasty pan and I'm going to get my bolts and everything cleaned up. I'm going to get pretty much everything cleaned up and see about, ew, that's just some nasty fluid. See about uh, getting some more of the transmission cleaned up. And then, since I already told you I wrote the book on this transmission, I'm just going to uh, jam this back in there and assume that that's how it sees. But anyways, I'll bring you guys back here in a few minutes after I'm done messing around and doing all the boring stuff there, what I consider boring. Nobody wants to watch me clean parts. So I'll bring you back here in a few. All right, everybody, let's go over this one more time. Got this thing ghetto built, repaired back together. Oh yeah, by the way, so when I was cleaning up under the car, guess what I found? I found that broken piece. So I uh, six minute JB welded it in there. Because, you know, let's be serious here for a second. This is going to be the weakest area, not having that chunk in there. So that'll give it a fighting chance, I guess. So. All right, we got that. This is all cleaned up. Pans cleaned up. All these miscellaneous parts are cleaned up. The screen is as clean as it's going to get. It was pretty nasty in there. So looking at this transmission pan, when I was cleaning it in my parts cleaner, it had a little bit of just typical clutch debris in it. But all that pudding stuff was just nasty water. If we look at this pan, we can actually see where the water had sat in it, because it's all rusty right up in here. But, regardless, when I drained this pan to see if anything was in it, I actually lifted the back of the car up, the front of the car up, and the car was on level ground. Now this car, when I went and found it in the fields, it was I would say it was kind of sitting on the side of a hill like this, so that would make sense why there's water on that side. Um, so anyways, I'm going to give that just a little bit more time to set up. And uh, I'm going to make a phone call to another friend. And I haven't talked to him in a month or two, but um, it seems like, and he's actually here in town, it seems like he said he may have had one of these Borg Warner transmissions. I'm going to see if I can't get a hold of him and uh, see if he's got one as well because if he's got one I guarantee it's only half a transmission so more than likely it would have the parts in it um, and I might be able to get the parts for that and I do appreciate the uh, individual on the Facebook group page who uh, offered up one of these to get this transmission going but like I said until I see if this transmission works you know, I don't want to use any of your good parts on it, and um, if it does work, I'm going to try to get uh, parts out of my buddy's parts transmission if he's got one. If he doesn't have one, I might be interested in buying that. However, I'm still going to hold off because there's a good chance I can get my hands on an M12, 
or M11. I don't know which one it is. So with all that being said, we're just going to keep plugging away. I was hoping to be able to go drive this car a little bit before the snow flies, which I might be able to. But um, we're going to let that set up, and then I'll climb back under there, and we'll videotape it and see if we can't get this thing put in there. And like I said, for all I know, this, all these screws and plates I put in here won't even fit inside the transmission anymore. So we'll figure all that out here in just a bit. All right, everybody, there we go. Test fit it, it'll fit. Had to modify it a little bit, had to grind down these bolts. And uh, had to put my little strap over here to clear the spring. So there's yet another weak spot. <laughs> Will this work? I don't know. I'm just hoping it's gonna work well enough to tell us if this transmission will work. Now it seems really stupid since I've complained about wasting $80 on transmission fluid. But I went to Walmart and guess what? They sell it for like $20. So lastly, obviously too, there's still gonna be water residual inside that transmission. So if this actually works, then I'll spend the time of hunting one of these down and then we're gonna to change the fluid again anyways. So it could take another two fluid changings to get all that water and crap out of there. I took the time to blow out the uh, radiator lines and kind of wash out the transmission. And the nice thing is there's a little bit of transmission fluid actually dripping out of the transmission still, but it's not strawberry. So that's good. Well, anyways, I'm going to get this thing jammed up in there and then I am going to decide how I'm going to get those tubes and I guess they just press in there. I'm thinking about putting just a little bit of right stuff around them to seal them because I don't know how much pressure this transmission actually puts out but I can't imagine it's a whole ton of pressure because I mean I can move that spring. It's pretty tough but I can move it so. But the weak spot of this whole thing is is where it's cracked around that inlet. So. That could be the ultimate downfall right off the bat. I don't know, but we'll give her a try and see. So let me get in there and get this bolted in and we'll go back under the car. All right, so kind of went in here and sprayed up in the transmission again. A little bit of strawberry there and normal or looking transmission fluid elsewhere. So we're just gonna have to run with it. Now, even if I had a brand new part I was putting in this transmission, these little metal lines are like really, really goofy. Like, I don't even know if they're supposed to be glued in or what. And I didn't actually smash these up like that. That's how all these were. Um, I took a little piece of wood. I have this tiny little wood hammer thing and I tapped them in and they went in. but. I don't even know. It seems kind of suspect to me that that's not going to seal, but I guess that's how they all are. I mean, none of them have a real super good tight fit. But, anyways, we just got to roll with it. But uh, I would assume if there's any problems, it's going to be in these lines right away. I'm guessing they probably maybe have enough oomph to move this spring. I don't know. So I'm going to get the uh, filter on. I got that all cleaned up. Went ahead and cleaned up all the bolts in the pan really good, as you've already seen. So we'll get those bolted up and I'm throw this pan on. Not too far away from figuring out if this junk even runs. The other thing, too, I got to look at this tube. I mean, I don't know if it's been cut off. I don't know if it's all bent up or what, but it was in pretty bad shape when I started. So I'll have to look at that off also, but uh, I'm gonna carry on here for a bit and I'm gonna ponder on these a little bit more and decide if there's something I should do about it. I mean, they're, they're snug, they're not loose. The only one that's loose is that one, but that was loose before I started, so. I don't know, kind of eyeball a little bit, and then I don't know if I should try to adjust this band or not. I mean, 
it's pretty simple to adjust. Imagine it's not supposed to have much slap, slack in it. But all right, anyways, I'll quit rambling on and try to get this thing going. Yeah, I got the trans pan all on. Looks like. Looks like the, tran the oil panage is leaking a little bit. Doesn't surprise me. But it also could be that fuel pump leaking. Steering box is leaking. Typical. And then. Ugh. We got a up there, probably a valve cover leak is what I'm going to guess. And then probably a rear main leak. But, as I've already said, it's pretty typical. And then something leaking on the exhaust manifold, but it is what it is. That's not too bad, it hasn't really dripped too much on the floor. I'm thinking most of this was when I first started up this car and had it running I didn't have the valve covers tightened on either side so that could just be residual as I like to say alright well anyways I gotta mess with that dipstick a little bit and I uh, guess we can fill it up with some oil and see what it does alright well I got her all warmed up Got her off the stands. Just got the fluid butt into it. A little nervous here. Alright. Well, we haven't tried anything yet. Well. Well, we got reverse. Sweet. Uh, we don't have any drive. It's trying to move in second. Well, shoot. I know we got plenty of tranny oil on it because I've been letting it sit here and warm up. Crazy, it's got reverse. No other gears. Right? Huh, acted like it had drive for a second. Maybe downhill, I guess. Well, that kind of sucks. I guess we can enjoy this reverse. I don't know if I'm gonna hit anything, should be okay. You guys check the other side for me. Junkyard javelin number two. Let's we'll just get her out in the road and see if she'll move, I guess. Maybe it just needs to clean up a little bit or something. I don't know. It definitely has reverse. Oh yeah. Oh, huh, it's absolutely just bizarre that it has reverse but no other gears. Ugh. 
Ah, put your dash. Absolutely no drive. Well, that just sucks. I thought maybe it'd start moving if I pushed it. Alright, well, I guess I get to hilariously back it back up. <laughs> I guess reverse is better than nothing. Alright, everybody. One last time. This is going to be the final time. I'm going to drain this fluid out. I'm sure it's going to look horrible. But that's just how it is. And I was playing with that adjuster on that band up front. I'm guessing it's supposed to have some sort of jam nut on it, so fingers crossed that since I'm not smart enough to look at that front adjusting screw going, well, that's finger tight and deciding I need to do something about it. Maybe that's just totally out of adjustment. So I'm going to drop this pan one more time, mess with that servo, put the pan back on, fill it back up with whatever transmission fluid. I don't care if it looks like a strawberry milkshake. It's driving fine in reverse. In fact, I looked insane driving around the compound here in reverse, but it drives just fine in reverse, so... And then I might have blown the front um, wheel cylinder. I don't know. I noticed it was pretty wet, so... Anyways, I'm gonna try this one last time. Alright, people. I didn't show much of any of that because that was a real pain in the butt. But I took that front servo and controlled the front band completely apart, cleaned it. Did my best to figure out an adjustment, so here we go. Oops. Oops. That was my bad. Alright, we have reverse. a little bit grabbier. people we try. She is one dead transmission. But we did give her a heck of a try.
Well, reverse is better than nothing. So, with that being said, everybody, I think that's the end of this video. So we're just gonna get her kind of put back together, get the hood on it. We'll just have to sit outside. I've got other projects coming in, and we'll see if we can't get a hold of that M12 transmission sometime. I tried my buddy to get some parts, but he ain't answering, so that doesn't surprise me though. But like I said, reverse is better than nothing. It can be reversed into the shop. Alright, well thanks for joining me on this episode and maybe uh maybe we'll get back to this car before it snows, but I'm gonna kinda doubt that. Alright, well we'll catch you guys in the next video.